Hello, this is Sandout here, and welcome back to Sandout's Toy Chest. This week's clue, do I even have a heart? Am I even real? Which could apply to a lot of characters in fictional media, but today I'll be applying to Digimon Digivolving Black War Greymon. Now, Black War Greymon was a villain during Season 2 of Digimon, also known as Digimon Adventure Zero Two, and was basically a Black War Greymon, which means he did get a couple toys. Um, this was the first. This is the Digivolving Black War Greymon. Uh, this is the one a lot of people will remember in America, as this was released over here in the regular Digivolving 5-inch line. And it is very identical to the Japanese release. Now, of course, it is just a straight repaint of Digivolving uh, War Greymon here, or Warp Digivolving Agumon to War Greymon. So as you can see, they are pretty much the same figure overall. Um, so that is pretty cool. But we're here to talk about Black War Greymon. Now this figure is one of the harder Digivolving figures to find. Um, looking through eBay listings, I've seen them go for about $100 or more. Um, this is not a cheap figure. This guy is quite pricey on the aftermarket. Um, and it's possibly because of Black War Greymon hype, but also possibly because it was a little harder to get than some of the others. Now I've had mine since I was a kid and luckily I found all his parts um, which was really convenient. But by happenstance, because this is a Digivolving figure, uh, the Digivolution is Black Agumon. You can kind of see his head back there. Now Black Agumon was not a thing in the series. Black War Greymon just existed by himself. But because his toy is a repaint of, Digivol of Warp Digivolving Agumon to War Greymon, you get Black Agumon to Black War Greymon. But other than that, let's take a look at the figure. Um, the head sculpt is pretty good. My biggest complaint with it is um, probably the horn on the front here. because This horn has to fold away for, for the transformation, but it's very, very loose connection. Um, but his head doesn't really have much articulation. It can just kind of pivot forward. It gives him kind of an angry look, which is neat, but that's about it. You get ball joint shoulders, which work very limited. Ball jointed elbows, which are also very limited. I do like how they sculpted the fist on the inside. That is pretty neat. You get no waist articulation. You get very limited ball jointed hips. Um, they do move forward and back. You get a ball jointed knee. That's very limited. And a very limited ball jointed foot. So there is a lot of restrictions on this guy. Um, I can't really come up with too many good poses for him beyond just kind of standing there. Because um, he is also super tricky to balance because he's very back heavy. So, yeah, he is a figure from 2000. Um, so that is kind of like the tricky part is that he's not going to be the most articulated figure. Especially since he does transform. So there you go, there's, there's Black Agumon, um, who is, is exclusive here. Now, Black Agumon did appear in Digimon Battle Spirit for the Game Boy Advance, I know that much for sure. So he does have some canonicity there, but um, other than that, he did not appear in the anime. But he looks really good. Uh, they did apply the Black War Greymon color scheme to him. Uh, so it's got the yellow eyes, he's got the silver um, accents. But yeah, he's actually not bad. Um, sorry for the hectic transformation. It's a really great transformation. Um, it's really well engineered, but it is so complicated to stuff. Pretty much you're taking a figure that's this big and compacting him down, and it's not easy to do. Um, especially with Black War Greymon, is, it's hard to tell because there's less colors going on. Um, it's a little bit easier with War Greymon here. I'm not going to spend the time transforming him, though. But as you can see, Black Agumon here looks pretty good. He is quite articulated, um, no head articulation, but he does have the same arm joints as Black War Greymon, and actually has more leg movement uh, than, than Black War Greymon does, so that's pretty neat overall. Um, I gotta say, it is a really cool figure, but like I said, very expensive on the aftermarket to get him, it's not easy to acquire, so it's hard to recommend, but 
I definitely say if you can find a good price on this, it's definitely worth it. It's a cool, cool figure. But that's not your only Black War Greymon option, as there was a D Arts release for Black War Greymon. Let's take a look at that. So here is D Arts Black War Greymon. This guy was released shortly after uh, War Greymon came out in the D Arts line, and Omnimon for that matter, or Megamon. And he was released in Japan as a premium Bandai exclusive. Which means the only way to get this guy was through a middleman, which is how I got mine. Um, so he did not come over to America. Um, he did not get re-released. He has only been released the one time, um, and he was an exclusive. Now, like I said, he's a direct repaint of the D-Arts War Greymon I previously reviewed several years ago. Um, and you can see that they are very similar figures. Um, there's not much different between them except for the colors. Uh, so there is that. But, as you can see here, the D-Arts Black War Grandma looks quite fantastic. I gotta say, I do love the way this figure looks, which is why I did want to get him um, right away. And as you can see, my biggest complaint, I think, is probably just his eye looks a little too bright in some angles. Um, and catches the light a little too well, so it kind of gives him a staring look, but it does look really nice. Um, overall, you can see the figure is done in a nice, uh, it's more of a... Uh, not a metallic, but a actual pearlized black, um, which gives him a great look to him. We can also see they mixed it up with black, uh, matte black on his legs and arms, um, but his armor itself is got this nice thing, plus the chromed out claws there. On the back you can see no crest of courage, just like it should be uh, on his wings there, which is pretty nice overall. Now, this figure, just like the Wargreymon, Joints do get loose over time, um, especially since his claws are heavy. You can see that this guy's arms don't hold up as well as they used to, but that is one issue that I have seen. Other than that, though, he's got a ball joint neck at two joints, because uh, he's basically an SH figure art. Um, D Arts was the spin off at the time. You got a ball joint shoulder, you got the rotation, you got the double joint, you got a ball joint wrist. Uh, the claws can come off. It is really tricky to put them back on, so I'm just going to. Say so they can come off if you want to recreate uh, scenes from the show. Ball joints here and here, uh, hip joints here and here, double joint knee, ball joint ankle, and ball joint wings. So you could get some really cool poses out of this guy um, with his Draymon Destroyer claws. So overall, D Arts Black War Draymon's really cool. Uh, in addition, you do get a Fireball, um, which is very, very similar, if not the same, to. Uh, War Greymon, and this is for Terra Destroyer, but it is kind of tiny, as you can see here. Um, it doesn't really work as giant uh, volleyball kind of thing that it was in the show. Um, it works better as tiny volleyball thing. Um, kind of him charging it up. There was a scene, though, um, when actually he was dueling War Greymon, where he was kind of throwing tiny Terra Destroyers. So it works better here than it did on War Greymon, but yeah, it still really should be a larger piece, but it isn't. Other than that, though, he doesn't really have any other accessories. This is about it. He is a one-accessory D-Art figure. Um, D-Arts did seem to have lesser accessories than figure arts overall, but you can see you get some really cool poses. Now, of course, I do want to do the comparison, since I am reviewing these guys together in the same video. Here is the Digivolving uh, War Greymon, Black War Greymon. You can see it's much bigger um, as a figure. And that's because the arts had their own scale going on, um, so they could be a little bit smaller. And the Digivolving figures had their own weird sense of scale. Um, this was just to make sure everything fit in an Agumon. Um, but you can see there that, you know, the Digivolving one is a lot larger than the D-Art. And here comes the big downside to the D-Art's Black War Greymon. It goes for about $160 or more. The lowest I've seen one lately is $160. This guy is not cheap. Um, it is very unfortunate that he was a premium Bandai exclusive despite being an easy repaint. Because if you really didn't pre-order him, there was really no chance of getting him. He was expensive on the aftermarket after he came out, and he's gotten even more expensive with the price of Digimon D-Arts going up. Not quite to the level of Omega Mon, but still, he's up there as pricey, pricey figure. Um, so, yeah, both black, both main Black War Greymon figures are really expensive. 
But if you're going to track one down, you're going to spend the money to get a black or gray mon. I'd say definitely go for the D-Art. Um, unless you really want the black Agumon transformation from the Digivolving figure, the D-Arts is probably your best bet. Plus, he makes a good companion piece to D-Arts uh, War Greymon, who recently got a re-release in Japan. So, there is that. So, overall, both Black War Greymons are actually really solid. I think that they're both great figures in their own right. One really fits the Digivolving collection, while the other fits the D-Arts, D-Real kind of line there. But, overall... If you're going to want a Black War Greymon, I'd recommend the D-Arts version. Just from an action figure standpoint, it is a better figure. But if you can get a good deal on the Digivolving one, that is also a good figure. So take your pick. See if you can find a good deal. They are going to be more expensive than their War Greymon counterparts. But I'd say it's worth it if you like the character. But if you don't like the character, don't really... The figure's not going to change your mind if you don't like the character in the first place. Um, so... That's pretty much all I can say. They're recommended if you can find a good price, but not recommended if you can't find a good price. Anyways, stay tuned for next week on Sandout's Toy Chest, where the clue will be three typical average kids. And we'll leave it at that. Anyways, stay tuned for more reviews here on Sandout 12, Model Kit Monday on Mondays, Sandout's Toy Chest on Thursdays, and the Sandout Review on Saturday. And be sure to check out Hirotaku.com for all your Digimon news and more. There's a lot of Digimon merchandise coming up, with Digimon Adventure Tri coming out, plus Digimon Adventure Tri is coming out. So looking forward to that. Anyways, talk to us out saying goodbye.